All right, let's go over some more cards today. Let's talk about a starter deck um, that was part of the original four that we put together, and it's the Clarion River starter deck. The Clarion River runs through western Pennsylvania, connects with the Ohio. Sorry, connects with the Allegheny, which connects to the Ohio. Um, <clears throat> and so the deck itself is local enough that the girls and I could go out and get pictures. We worked with a bunch of specialists to put this one together, and so some of them appear in the deck itself. And let me get the cards that are not the cards that don't have the backing I'm setting aside so we can talk about the other ones. <clears throat> so when it comes to the humans that are in the deck, each of the four, first four starting decks and most of the other decks have four humans or five humans in it. And so here's your humans. We have Grandma Strom. Um, she lets you draw an additional card and because in real life she lets the girls have a little extra. We have, let's see, who is that? Steve Harris. He's an entomologist over at Clarion University and he um, plays the entomologist card in the game as well. We have a conservation engineer. His name is Joe. I can't remember what his last name is right now, but he's a great guy. Fedor, Fedore, I want to say. So he is an engineer for conservation. At least that's what he studied at the time when he was teaching. Uh, we have Tim Alderton, who's a botanist down in North Carolina. And we have Susie Boyden, who also works at Clarion University. She is, boy, that light's rough. Um, she is in administration now, but in the biology section in the arts and sciences. But she was a biologist and still is. Um, so she was kind enough to be a part of our game as well. All of them gave us guidance as we were putting the decks together. The unique cards, here's a handful of unique cards that um, are non-species. We have Web of Life, which is a multiplayer card, and it uh, connects all the ecosystems together. So yours and all your opponents' ecosystems can share resources. Temperature Drop, which is in essence a skip card. So it's almost like nature took a pause for a round because the temperature has plummeted. One of my favorites is Relocate Species. And it gives you the ability to, lo to locate and play one species, or locate one species in play that's non-human, and relocate it to another ecosystem, either from somebody else's to yours, yours to somebody else's, or maybe two competitors that are getting too high in the point totals, and you're trying to collapse part of their ecosystem. Another one is Ideal Conditions, another multiplayer card, and what this one offers is the ability for you, everybody, to draw three cards. So it's almost like it's been ideal conditions for new species to arrive. Children at Play is another skip card, just like a, uh, the temperature drop. Anytime kids are out in the wild, everything kind of freezes. And then there's two special regions. And we have regular regions, which is like forests or grasslands, running water. We have two special regions. One's called the Stromstead, which is our property. And it, our property has all four region types that are local. We don't have um, sub-zero or arid, and we don't have salt water, but we got forest, grassland, running water, and standing water here. So <clears throat> it's worth negative points because it gives you four regions in one, And uh, but the, the card itself is one card, but it acts like four. That's why it's negative. And another one is the animal sanctuary, and you can ignore requirements, and you can play, you have to have a human. Uh, at least one region, at least one human, and then you can take any one animal species and ignore its requirements and play it on this card. So it's worth negative four because the assumption is you'll find something that's worth a lot more points and play on that card. We have some basic regions for the Clarion River. Most of them are running. A couple, I think there's a couple standing waters in the back. There's a grassland. Nope, just all running. Grassland regions and running waters. Uh, grasslands are the, the grassy areas along the banks. And then you have species that we've taken from local, um, local rivers like wild celery. Obviously the white water lily plays a role. 
and then there is some trees that grow right up against water like the white birch silver maple is a good one it needs a lot of water quaking aspen see that a lot of along the banks eastern hemlock eastern white pine parrot's feather parrot's feather is an invasive species that's what they're calling it <clears throat> it's from south america but it grows really well in our water uh, something unique to the Clarion River is that it has two types of bacteria. It's got rock snot, which is an awesome name, and it has iron bacteria. And iron bacteria negates acidic waters. So if you play the acidic waters card, or somebody plays it on you, I guess, then this iron bacteria will negate it. You have certain numbers of, of invertebrates. Let me get through them first quite a few invertebrates to choose from. Everything from a oval amber snail to just the regular black carpenter ants. Uh, carpenter bee. Everybody thinks they're bumblebees, but the ones without the extra yellow are carpenter. Um, butterflies. There's an aphid in the front here. So a lot of invertebrates along the river. We know that already though. And then there's a mountain range, because Clarion River is along, right in the center of the Appalachian Mountains, or it goes, cuts through them, it's not in the center. And there's a bunch of creatures, a bunch of, of animals. So from snapping turtles to smallmouth bass. And I have a confession, the smallmouth bass isn't a smallmouth bass. We just found that out a little while ago. And what was labeled as a musky in the aquarium is not a musky, it's a gar. So I gotta switch these pictures out. So there's your confession, guys. You'll see a, a V2 listed on the picture soon. So if you have one of the original pictures here, we won't be printing them anymore, so maybe someday they'll be worth something. But there's different species. In fact, the most expensive card in that first collection is the Eastern Hellbender. And it is 29 points, and it is, um, an endangered species that lives along the Clarion River. So then we have coyotes and we have, uh, what is that, eastern brook trout, different water species. And then this bald eagle we got from Shaver's Creek, it's a picture we took from Shaver's Creek of one of their eagles. So that sums up the Clarion River, if it's played well. I don't remember the point total, I should start offering that too. But if it's playing well, played well, it um, as long as you can get the mountain range out, you can typically, uh, you have a real good chance of winning the game. So there's my video for today, guys. There's Two Sisters in the Wild is the company. Edge of Extinction is the game system. My name is Jason Strom, I'm the dad. But the daughters have moved away from playing the game and, and promoting it, so we're gonna keep moving forward without without interrupting their direction. Probably will free up some ability for bringing some experts and let them help build the game system out as well. So that's the Clarion River. It's one of the starting decks. It's one of the first four we created. It's the one that's used in the educational tournaments more than any other. Um, the first four are, I should say, more than any other decks. Uh, school systems really enjoy them. And it teaches them about their local eco ecosystems. Well, I don't have anything else. Have a great day, guys, and we'll do another deck here soon. Bye.